<laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please. Oh wow, a classroom holiday party out of control. I better send in Kyle on this one. Spencer, what's the deal? No warning? Looks like I'm in school's ventilation shaft and... Where are my shoes? It's an emergency. I had to get you down there fast. You know the drill. Come out to the school, help a teacher, have a few laughs. Hey Kyle, I'm patching the teacher in. Mayday, mayday! The students have seized control of my classroom! Don't worry, I'm here to... Hey, is that a pizza? Huh? Does it sound like I'm ordering a pizza? No, it sounds like you need some help. First, we need to get your students focused with some structure. And then, we need to make a plan for when they return from the holiday break. That's great! But where did you come from? The Launcher Classroom Space Station. You come from... outer space? No, I'm from North Carolina. I only work in outer space. Hey Kyle, you're like a space cowboy. yippee ki Mr. Spencer. Season's greetings and welcome to Launch Your Classroom. I'm Kyle Pope. There's a classic holiday song that claims this is the most wonderful time of the year and I believe that a majority of teachers would agree. After all, you've worked incredibly hard for the first semester, and what better way to celebrate than a nice, relaxing break? But wait, there are still a couple weeks of classes left. Students are buzzing with excitement, causing them to act out more than usual and lose focus on their studies. It can be tempting to give in early, show movies, and throw holiday parties. However, this can lead to increased disruptions which can shatter the classroom structure you've built in the first half of the year. Just because the break is near doesn't mean the learning and classroom management should stop. So today on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to focus on how you can successfully navigate to the end of the semester and then how you can start strong once the new semester has begun. Let's take a look at our first strategy. Oh, hello there. <laughs> Thanks, Hando. As you can see, we're all getting into the holiday spirit around here. While the excitement brings a flurry of good cheer to the classroom, it also means students are more likely to rush through their assignments or wind up off task. But don't worry, you can avoid disruptions by giving your students extension activities. Speaking of activity, it looks like it's time to start the day. Good morning, gang. Today, we're gonna finish up the writing assignments we began yesterday. Please take out your journals and begin. Oh, awesome! I finished that yesterday, so now I can work on a long list of presents I wanna make for everyone I know. Let's see. I'll make a bookmark for Patrick, a paper snowflake for- Clarice is understandably excited about the upcoming holiday break. I'm going to give her a quiet extension activity so that my other students can work without distraction or frustration. Extension activities are fun, independent projects students can work on after they've finished their assignments. Keeping students engaged prevents them from becoming bored and allows everyone to work at their own pace. What do you think I should do? Clarice, since you're all caught up, I have a super creative craft for you to do. In this activity, students write their wishes for the new year on candles and paste them inside handmade windows. This project is simple enough that students can pick it back up anytime they finish their work early. It uses materials my students already have at their desk, so no one will need to walk around the room gathering supplies and distracting others. I prompted my students to use vocabulary words in their wishes. Designing extension activities around your content keeps students on track for any high-stakes assessments that may be coming up. 
This activity is fun and calming, so it feels like a brain break, but it's also an opportunity for review. Channeling your students' holiday energy into fun activities frees you up to assist students who are still working on graded material. Ah. Hey Patrick, what can I help you with? Well, I finished my assignments and I don't know what to do next. Not to worry. Thanks, Grabo. Patrick, Jasper made this awesome crossword puzzle for the whole class to enjoy. The science of snowflakes, yay! Students love puzzles. They're as much fun to create as they are to complete, and generating their own review games gives students a sense of autonomy. Be sure to display finished activities in the classroom so everyone can benefit from the review, even if they don't have time to participate. Since students will always finish their work at different times, you'll want to have extension activities prepared year-round. But be sure to save the really special ones for the holidays. This lets students know you share in their excitement, but still take their behavior and schoolwork seriously. Praise students who complete extension activities, but never fault anyone who isn't able to do so. Remember, learning the material is the number one goal. Incorporating these fun activities into your content will keep students motivated. Plus, you'll be able to spend less time managing off-task behavior. And that's a gift every teacher can be grateful for. Have you noticed the energy level in your classroom steadily rising? Students may be wearing red hats with furry white trim to school, talking about presents, or snacking on candy canes. It's the holiday season. Winter holidays are a source of excitement for students as well as teachers. Your school may be planning events such as concerts or performances. Even though it is completely optional, many teachers also plan some sort of classroom event. But how can you celebrate the holiday season with your students while keeping them on task and focused on your lessons? Here are a few tips we encourage you to use if you plan to celebrate the holiday season with your students. Number one, keep it simple. Think of tying the celebration into your content as much as possible. Did your class recently earn a whole class reward or did they perform particularly well on a recent project or assessment? If not, you can still find easy ways to incorporate holiday activities into the curriculum, such as reading comprehension passages or holiday-related math word problems. You can culminate with a brief celebration, but remember to keep it structured with clear behavioral expectations for your students. Be prepared to return to your curriculum if needed. Number two, consider a small craft project for students to complete in class. These can be used as brain breaks, an extension activity, or can be taken home to complete over the winter break. Most students will enjoy the change of pace, and crafts give students some more focus to put their holiday energy. Number three, snacks are not required, but it's a great opportunity for students to contribute to the classroom community. Find out your school's food policies and check with the school nurse about any possible food allergies in your students. Communicate the information to parents a week or two before the celebration. Include a list of possible snack items and paper goods they might be willing to help provide. Number four, keep it secular. If you decide to do a study of holidays with your students, check with your administrator first and remember to be considerate of different beliefs. Cultural representations of the holidays are acceptable, but religious images and stories are not appropriate in a public school setting. Remember, the holidays are an exciting time. With a bit of planning and forethought, you can celebrate the season without losing sight of your instructional purpose. Hey Kyle, are you there pal? Yeah, and it looks like the situation's gotten much better down there. It has, but now I feel like a real grouch. Isn't there anything I can do to bring a little holiday fun to my class? How about a holiday themed brain break? A brain break? What's that? Brian, I give you the L-Y-C.
Welcome to the holiday party, pal. Oh, hey there. I've been enjoying a relaxing winter break and now it's time to start thinking about my first day back in the classroom. Over the holidays, my students and yours have been following a different set of rules and procedures at home. So, you'll want to spend a lot of time on day one reintroducing your expectations and routines. Here are some strategies you can follow to ensure your new semester gets off to a great start. Step one, the enthusiastic welcome. As soon as you start your day, let your students know you're glad to have them back. Keep in mind that your students will have different feelings about returning to school. Some will wish they were still on vacation, while others will be thrilled to be back. When you express excitement, you instill both groups with a sense of positivity. When students see how invested you are in their success, they are more likely to perform well right from the start. Great job! Now that you've eased your students into the day, it's time to jog their memory. That brings us to step two, the daily schedule. This low stakes activity provides students an opportunity to remember their routines and gets them back into the rhythm of doing assignments. Give students 15 minutes to write out their schedule and personalize it with decorations. Be sure to provide lots of help to any students struggling to remember. Review the schedule afterward as a class, then award students an easy daily grade so they can start the new year on a positive note. After grading, allow students to keep their schedules. That way, if a student winds up off task, you can refer them back to their schedule and kindly redirect their behavior. Well done! No, this isn't for me. It's for my students. Your first day back is all about reteaching rules in real time, but it's also an opportunity to work in lots of praise. In fact, step three is to give prizes for procedures. Whenever students have a procedure or transition, acknowledge their positive behavior with verbal praise and rewards like stickers and badges. That way, you can reinforce the structure that students need while building strong rapport. Now that your students are feeling more comfortable in the classroom, you can move on to something a bit more serious. That brings us to step four, reteaching your rules. Go over the rules on your classroom posters at least once. Then throughout the day, monitor student behavior and quickly correct the rules they are neglecting to follow. Be calm, kind, and consistent so students know you will be patient as they readjust, but that you do take the rules seriously. The sooner you convince them to follow the rules, the sooner they'll be able to succeed in their learning. As the first day back to school comes to a close, there's just one last thing to do. That's step five, setting the end of day expectation. Remind students that today was a reintroduction and that you're back on track tomorrow. Send a note home illustrating everything you reviewed today. By looping in parents, you reinforce your teacher-family partnerships and give your students every opportunity to understand your expectations. Starting day two, it's important that you adhere to the consequences you've established and that you praise positive behavior often. Remember, students can read your energy. If you show enthusiasm for their achievement, they'll strive to meet your high expectations. You are not the same teacher as you were when you began in this profession, and you will not be the same teacher years from now. That's because teachers evolve, lesson by lesson and year by year. Successful teachers try new methods, learning what works best and what should be changed the next time they teach the course. Returning to a new group of students is the ideal time to reset your practice and make the changes you considered implementing. It's a great chance to try new approaches. 
When you brainstorm changes in how you teach your content, start with self-reflection. Look at those notes you added to your lesson plans last semester. What improvements did you suggest to yourself? Now is the time to try them out and to look for stronger results. This is your controlled experiment, so find what works better for you and your students. Meanwhile, analyze your summative assessment results from the last course and identify your students' learning gaps in the curriculum. You can build new strategies and lessons around those concepts. Now that you have looked inward for changes you want to make, it's time to look outward. Your PLC can suggest strategies that address the learning gaps you identified. Remember, you and your PLC members lean on one another to grow. Next, revisit the observation notes from your administrators and incorporate their suggestions into your fresh start. This is also a great time for professional development in the areas in which you want to improve. Look for webinars, independent reading, and district opportunities for continued education. We grow when we observe our practice from other perspectives. Speaking of perspectives, guess who can give you honest feedback about what to change for next time? That's right, your students. Although asking your students for an evaluation can be intimidating, they are the true experts in what they did and did not understand. Your former students will respect your ability to ask for constructive criticism, and your next class will be the better for it. Remember, teaching is a growing, changing profession, and you are growing and changing along with it. With some reflection and thoughtful adaptations of your instruction, you will continue to evolve in your practice, which will benefit both you and your students. Teachers and students alike are excited for the upcoming holiday break. It's perfectly fine to engage in a small amount of celebration before the end of the semester, but being too indulgent will lead to increased student misbehavior and a loss of focus on your curriculum. By continuing to teach, utilizing effective extension activities, you'll be able to ensure students end the semester strong. Then, as you return, be prepared to reteach important parts of your classroom management plan to ensure an auspicious start to the second half of the school year. This month, on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to continue examining topics related to the holiday break. We'll sit down with an expert educator to discuss common questions teachers have about holiday behavioral management. Then, we'll have some tips on relaxing during the break so you can be renewed for the next semester. And we'll finish up with a special holiday message from EPI and LIC. So be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to get all of our upcoming professional development content. Thank you, happy holidays, and we'll see you next time on Launch Your Classroom. I was stuck up there the whole holiday break. I better check in with Brian. Let's see, where am I? It looks like... The storage room. Kyle, there you are. I never would have made it through the holiday break without you. Hey, I just helped out a little. You built that lesson yourself. And I've got some great ideas for developing it further. Come on in, I'll show you. If that's their idea of ending the semester, I gotta be here for the end of the school year.